Welcome back, my lovely Rose Garden. This is the second video in a series on creative writing basics. You may start with any video in the series, but just in case you missed it, I'll put a card up with a link to the first video in the series right here. If you've already seen it or are starting here, welcome. Please subscribe and let's get into it. Now that we're well on our way to building the what of the story, it's time for the who. Characters are, of course, the people, or animals, or robots, or anything else you like, in your story who participate in the plot. Characters include your protagonist, or the main character whose perspective the reader will see most closely, the antagonist, or the character who stands in the way of the protagonist achieving their goal, and supporting characters who fill out various other roles in the story, such as mentors, friends, rivals, and so on. This is a large topic, one that I will not be able to cover completely in this video. For this reason, I have linked additional resources in the description of the video, so give those a look when you're done watching. Generally, characters of all sorts can be broken down into two categories, dynamic and static. For once, I'm going to start with the latter. Static characters are characters who do not change. They are usually minor characters or characters who are not meant to be the focus of the story. Think of your supporting cast members who generally don't have a lot of need to change in order to take part in the plot. To give an example off the top of my head, most of the members of Class 1A in My Hero Academia are static characters. Their job is to be bodies in the classroom to fill it out. Occasionally, they might get a little focus, but there's no deep need for change in most of these characters that isn't already focused on and explored through the main characters. As much as we may love them, characters like Su, Ojiro, Hagakure, Sato, and Kaminari are characters who have been pretty much the same since they first appeared, and can be described with a quick handful of adjectives or traits. Kaminari is cheerful and friendly. Ojiro is level-headed and likes martial arts. Sato bakes. These aren't characters with unexplored depths, at least not at the time that I'm writing this video. That doesn't mean that these are bad characters. In fact, every character being written as dynamic can distract from the protagonist and their growth and goals. Static characters perform a key function in the story, and static is a neutral descriptor. Even the protagonist can sometimes, though rarely, be a static character. But we'll get to that later. Dynamic characters, on the other hand, are characters who do change. Usually, this is reserved for the protagonist, a few select supporting cast members, and maybe the antagonist, depending on the kind of conflict involved in the story. These are characters who have some kind of personal flaw that they need to either overcome to grow as people, or, if you're writing a more tragic kind of story, give into in order to transform into their worst self. Continuing with the My Hero Academia example, this would be a character like All Might, who has essentially fallen from grace and has to learn how to live as a powerless civilian while still trying to support his successor. He has a lot of inner turmoil and conflict to explore as he compares his current state to the idealized self he embodied during his prime. That isn't something that can be summarized in a few words, especially as the narrative explores the change that All Might goes through from where he was at the beginning of the story, including the context of his prime as the symbol of peace, to where he is now. The change that a dynamic character goes through is referred to as a character arc. So how do you build a character arc? There are a lot of writing advice videos out there about this very topic, but you clicked on mine, so I'm going to tell you how I do it. And again, link some other videos that I think are great resources on this topic in the description. In my opinion, a successful character arc means that one or both of these things change in a main character, their motivation and or their goal. Let's define these terms really quick. Motivation is what drives a character. It's why they do what they do, why they want what they want. 
This can be something complex, like following their dying grandparents' final wish, or wanting to make the world a better place, or something simple, like spite, or thinking that something looks cool. The character's goal is what they want to achieve or obtain, what they hope the outcome of their actions will be. If your character is going on a quest, this is what they are questing for. If you're writing a romance novel, the character's goal is probably to be in a successful relationship. Note that motivations and goals might be part of the overall characterization of the character, but they are not the same things as character traits. Character traits have more to do with a character's personality. For example, jealous, shy, and confident are character traits. While these can sometimes overlap with a character's goal or motivation, for example, if a nervous character's goal is to become more confident, they are not intrinsically linked. A mean character becoming nicer is not necessarily experiencing a character arc by the definition we're using in this video, unless this shift relates to a change in their motivation and or goal. Different combinations of motivations and goals help create a diverse body of characters in a work. For example, again, My Hero Academia. Most of the characters the reader follows in the story want to become professional heroes, presumably high-ranking ones at that. Protagonist Deku and supporting character Bakugo both want to be the number one ranked hero in Japan, but their motivations, why they want to achieve that, make them drastically different characters. Deku wants his mere presence to reassure people. Bakugo wants to prove he's the best at everything. Other characters, like Ochako, want to make enough money to support their parents. Ida wants to live up to his family legacy and the example set by his older brother. All these characters are essentially striving for the same thing, and some of them even have similar traits. But their differing motivations mean that they aren't copy-pastes of each other and thus keep the story more interesting. For these characters to undergo a complete character arc, either their motivation or their goal would have to change. Now for my non-My Hero Academia-related example, Simba from The Lion King. At the beginning of The Lion King, Simba wants to be king because he was born into a life of privilege and him becoming king is a given due to the line of succession, or because he thinks being king is really cool and means he's powerful and important and other positive traits he associates with his father. Both his goal and motivation are extolled in Just Can't Wait to Be King, a song that's all about how awesome his life is going to be when he's king because he'll get to do whatever he wants all the time. After his father is killed in a stampede, Simba's goal is to make a new life outside the Pride Lands due to Scar gaslighting him and making him feel responsible for his father's death. His motivation to run away is guilt. Then, after speaking with his father's cloud ghost and getting some closure, Simba finally sets his sights on returning to the Pride Lands and becoming king, the same goal he had at the beginning, but his motivation is no longer because having power is cool, but to right the wrongs of Scar's leadership and take on the responsibility of fixing a broken kingdom where others are suffering. It isn't going to be fun and awesome and cool, it's going to be a lot of work. Work that he initially ran away from when confronted by Nala because he had not yet gotten over his guilt. Even in the confrontation with Scar, his guilt nearly overtakes him and allows Scar to win, but then Scar makes the mistake of monologuing about how he killed Mufasa and completely removes the guilt from Simba. Now Simba's got revenge added to his motives too. So here we see an example of a full arc. Even though Simba starts and ends the story with the same goal, to become the titular Lion King, his motivation changes drastically from start to end, and at one point he even has a completely different goal. This makes Simba a dynamic character. Contrast this with Scar, who starts and ends the story wanting to be king out of jealousy and selfishness. Until the very end, Scar holds on to being king with everything he has because it is all he has. His motivation does not change, as is seen when he outlaws any mention of Mufasa. He never tries to be a better king by listening to his subjects, and his goal does not change even once it's achieved. Scar is no better off once he's king than he ever was, but he does not realize this and change his goal because he is a static character. Most Disney villains of this era are static because if they reveal a capacity for change, a character arc of their own, 
then time would have to be spent developing that, taking the spotlight away from the hero and making it a lot harder to root for these villains to get their comeuppance. But what about static protagonists? What about cases where the main character's motivation and or goal does not change? Does this mean that they're a failure as a lead and the author has done a horrible job? Well, no, not necessarily. A catalytic hero is a leading character who does not change very much themselves. They are a static character with no arc. But their actions, beliefs, and or involvement in the plot is a catalyst for change in others. And yes, you can probably guess where we're going with this for an example. Deku. Now, before you start typing your refutation in the comments, let me say this. I love the Broccoli Boy. I adore and relate to Deku so hard you can't even imagine. But going off the definition of character arc supplied earlier, he is a static character. His motivation is to make others feel reassured and to save people with a smile, which informs his goal of becoming the number one hero like his idol All Might. He almost gives up in the first episode, but then he sticks to his motivation and dives in to save Bakugo, earning the notice of All Might and setting him on the path to achieving the very same goal he started with. Throughout the series, the audience repeatedly sees Deku's determination and devotion to the same goal and motivation, and so do other characters in the series. All Might, Todoroki, even Bakugo to an extent, are all changed by Deku's beliefs and actions, far more than Deku himself. Ida almost goes down a very dark path before Deku's interference returns him to his previous goal and motivation, now with greater dedication and context of what it means to uphold his brother Tensei's example as he takes on the mantle of Ingenium. Is Deku a worse protagonist for being a static character? I would say no, because Deku's transformative potential lies in how he impacts other characters. Deku himself doesn't really need to change. His actions, belief, and presence change the others around him, oftentimes inspiring them to be better or to reevaluate their own choices and beliefs. This is especially true in All Might, who, now as the powerless one watching over the new holder of One for All, realizes the mistakes that he made in achieving his own goal to be the symbol of peace and the pressure he has unwittingly placed on Deku's shoulders that feed into Deku's self-sacrificing tendencies which have not changed since the start of the series either, by the way. Sure, he hurts himself a little less with his quirk now, but he still routinely damages his body by pushing far beyond his limits, a trait he picked up from All Might, who now regrets instilling this mindset in his protege and realizes the pain he caused those close to him when he acted with this mindset himself. Even Sir Night Eye, whomst I actually do not like, experiences more of a change in motivation and goal for knowing Deku than Deku does for knowing Sir Nidai. The changes in Deku when he interacts with other characters are external, better control of his quirk or a new perspective on how to use his quirk, not a transformation of his core beliefs, motivations, or goals like he inspires in others. Okay, I'll go on all day about this if I'm allowed, so it's time to wrap this up before we move on to a new topic. Both dynamic and static characters serve a specific function in the story and neither is inherently better than the other. While 90% of protagonists are dynamic characters, they can be static, and this can be done effectively depending on the type of story being told, the setting the character exists in, and the characters they interact with. These are all things to consider when creating a character. If I haven't lost you with all the My Hero Academia references by this point, you may be preparing to defend Deku's character in the comments. After all, if Deku isn't a dynamic character, then why is he a compelling protagonist? Why do we care what happens to him, about his dreams to be the number one hero, about his struggles to achieve that goal? Surely the fact that he faces conflict and addresses it in meaningful ways is proof of an arc. And I would again assert that Deku is not a dynamic character, but he is a rounded character. Round characters are defined by Masterclass as, quote, nuanced and well thought out, whereas flat characters are, quote, two-dimensional and lack nuance. The article that discusses round and flat characters specifically states that while round characters and dynamic characters are often one and the same in practice, they are not the same in principle. 
Generally speaking, you do want a dynamic character to be round, because being a round character is usually a sign of a well-executed character arc. But let's be honest with ourselves, not every arc is well-written. So how do you write a rounded character versus a flat one? Let's work our way backwards a bit and examine what a flat character is for a moment. A flat character serves a specific purpose to move the story forward in some way, and that's it. Think of the nameless barkeep who gives your D&D party the tip-off for their quest, or the comic relief pet that helps keep the mood light when the stakes are starting to get a little higher in your children's novel. These aren't characters that are going to reflect on their flaws and failings or take a lot of initiative to pursue a goal, unless their stated purpose is to be one of several competitors to the protagonist in some kind of tournament-based narrative. Flat characters' existence is impacted by the plot first and foremost. They only exist insofar as the plot needs them to exist. Round characters, in contrast, are those whose existence impacts the plot. As stated earlier, they have nuance. They are more likely to reflect on their motives and goals, even if those motives and goals do not change. But most simply put, a round character is a character with a complex personality. Rather than one or two base traits, round characters will have strengths and flaws that interact with each other and influence their decisions. Deku may not necessarily change as the result of a character arc, but he does have a nuanced personality and character flaws that impact his choices, which in turn have impact on the plot and the characters around him. He is a round character. Compare him to someone like the slime villain, who only exists as a reason for Deku to meet All Might and show off his innate heroism. The slime villain is essential to get the story going, but is not important to the story beyond that. He doesn't even have a canonical name because his purpose is served as soon as Deku runs in to save Bakugo from him. He never needs to show up again, his job is done. That is a flat, static character, and he should be. Imagine how slow the story would have been to start if a whole episode or two had been devoted to why this low-level villain was committing robbery in broad daylight, just to never appear again. So when talking about round, dynamic, flat, or static characters, keep in mind that each serves an important role in the story. Not every character can be round or dynamic, or the reader would lose focus on which character they're supposed to be giving the most attention to. Not every character can be flat or static, or the reader won't care about them. A good story utilizes round, flat, dynamic, and static characters appropriately in varying combinations and situations to create an engaging cast of characters that the reader wants to spend time with. Now there is a lot, lot more to consider when it comes to writing strong characters, that is, characters that are powerful enough to carry the weight of the story and the reader's interest. There's so much more, in fact, that I'm actually going to have to make a part two for this lesson, because I can't fit it all into this one video without seriously delaying its release. So I hope that this lesson on creative writing basics gave you some things to think about, and made you aware of some tools that can make your character writing stronger. And remember, not every character, no matter how well written, will appeal to every reader. Personal taste accounts for a lot when it comes to media consumption. Just apply these writing lessons in the way that best suits your writing and what you are trying to accomplish with it. That's all for this time. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more bookish content. I've included links to articles I sourced for this video in the description, along with a few additional resources you may want to check out for further study. I've also got my website, Patreon, and Etsy store links down there if you want to support my content, as well as my social media accounts so you can enjoy my less coherent ramblings. Thank you for watching, and keep writing till next time, Rose Garden! Thank you.